In this demo, we're going to use some sea ice data to create the graphs that you see here. Uh, for example, this one shows the sea ice extent over the uh, northern Atlantic, and it's plotted the extent of the sea ice versus the day, oops, this should say day of the year, fix that. And the data that I got this from, or the data that I downloaded is from the National Snow and Ice Data Center. And I downloaded two files, two CSV files that you see here, one for the uh, northern sea ice data. We can do a preview of that quickly. It's actually a big file, so it takes a little while to open up. But you can see that we have year, month, day, and extent, and some other data. And the same thing for the, for the south sea ice data. So let me show you how I took this data and created the graphs that you have in this file. We're going to start with a new file. And I'm going to start just by importing the data. And here we have all the columns that came into this file. And um, this data is really numeric data, so I do need to do a quick conversion here. It didn't import everything as numeric, um, I think because maybe that first line in, in many of these columns is text. But now we have the columns set to the right data type, and um, we can see the first line is just a label, but that's okay. That's not going to interfere with our analysis. And if I want to just do a quick plot of this, one thing you'll notice is that this has year, month, and day. I can't get the plots that you saw in the last uh, file without having the actual date. None of these are actual date fields in terms of having all of that information in one column. And to do that is actually really easy in data graph. We can add a function. And the function is called seconds. And what it does is it allows us to take the year, the month, and the day, and convert it into the seconds, uh, I think it's since from 1970 on. That's kind of the convention for how dates are interpreted. Um, and the way that we do it in, in data graph, it's a kind of a standard way. But in any case, once we have it in those seconds, I can say that this data type is date. I can change how it's displayed if I would like. But this basically is taking the year, month, and day and giving us now a proper date column. What's nice about this is that then I can take that date and I can uh, highlight this and the extent go ahead and do a plot, and now I have the data. I have a plot of the data over time, and you can see that there is this decrease in the extent uh, that you see in this data because there's uh, just this single line. I could add a fill just to maybe give this a little bit more. Um, uh, that's maybe too bright of a color. We'll just go ahead and use the light blue. The graph that we're going to do is a box command or a box and whisker diagram where this now gives us some statistics about the data that we have. And I'm going to go ahead and add the box command. So I might as well just double click at the top here to fill out the screen so I can get as much viewing as possible. And we're going to have the values here be the um, extent of the sea ice again. And the position here, we can go ahead and use the year column and that will give us these um, box plots of the data for each year. And I'm going to go ahead and also add a fill into these boxes. And notice that there's a little box um, over on the side. That's because right now I don't have a full data set for 2019. Uh, so what I can do is I can just add, put this in a group and add a mask where I'm only going to have the year if it's actually, um, to make sure we have complete years, I'd actually do, let's see, 1979, I believe, to 2018. And then, sure enough, I get complete years for each one of these, um, for each of the boxes. I can even extract that, uh, whoops, not from there, extract some of that data out, for example, the, the median and the 
um, and the location that's associated with that, which in this case, the location would be the year. And because now this is uh, data that's on a sort of a separate scale, I can also put this in a group. So these would be my stats from this, um, from this data. Now, the, the last graph that I wanted to do here that I showed you had the days of the year as the x-axis, and I need to create a column in order to allow me to do that. And that's, that's um, also another thing that's really easy to do because there's a function that allows me to do it. I can take the date that I've set up and, I, and use a function called day of year. The input, oops, I didn't, did a zero instead of a, an O. So day of year and the input would be the date column. And sure enough, that gives me a column that gives me the, oops, well, I can't call that day. So we'll call that um, day of year. There we go. And, and now I can go ahead and plot this. Um, I'm going to plot this actually using a points command because that will allow me to add the color scheme into each one of the points. So my X will be the day of the year. My Y is going to be the extent. Sure enough, here's all my points. We'll make this a solid. I'm going to add a color scheme based on the year. We can create the color scheme. And this is just the color scheme that's picked by default. Instead of the rainbow, I want to go with something that has um, shades of blue. And I can also change this time scale if I want. If I wanted this by decades, uh, if I make the stride five, um, oh, actually I think maybe 10, there we go. Now we have, sorry, that makes more sense. Now we have a decade for each one of these. And I could also update the colors so that the colors um, make more sense. You may also want to add some opacity into these colors because there's a lot of points that are overlapping and um, you can go through each one of these and, and add some opacity. Now the last thing to do here is to add in the, the legend so that we understand what each one of these colors mean. And because this is a color scheme, I need to add the legend with a, uh, a custom legend. And we would add a variable where it's colors. And sure enough, there is my legend. Plots, and I've added in some comments to explain a little bit about what we did in this file. And also one of the things, notice the uh, points, depending on how you change this, it can dramatically sort of change the look of the graph. So I'm preferring to have the point size a little bit smaller than what I had before. And I also wanted to let you know that this file will be available in our new online examples. And I've already uploaded it. So if you have Datagraph, you can go ahead and get this file. And um, we hope that this, particularly the, these example files being online will be a big help and it's a way for us to quickly get examples to you.